How's it going, real fans of Model Railroaders? I figured I'd give this review thing a shot. Today we have the Scale Trains Rivet Counter Series 42 foot Thrall Trinity Coil Steel Car in the Union Pacific scheme. Let's get this unboxed. They're pretty standard packaging, nice clamshell. Should do a decent job of keeping everything safe in transit and during storage. In the packaging, you have their little information card and an exploded view diagram of every part that comes on every version of the car. You also have the stickers for the coils. They, be, they come undecorated. It's got this really nice soft plastic that should do a good job of protecting the paint. Go ahead and pull out the coils real quick. And we'll remove the car. And the baggie with the load dividers. Let's go ahead and get it up here on the rails. All right, let's pull the hood off. So you can see inside that the interior has been detailed. It looks like plastic, painted to look like wood. Be my guess anyways. I'm not gonna scratch it, but that's just what it looks like to my eyes. The detail is pretty good. The photo etched walkways are also pretty phenomenal. It has been sitting in my basement for a while, so the walkways have had a chance to straighten out. Sometimes you'll notice with these photo etched walkways, if you bring them into a cold room, they will start to f uh, flex quite a bit and not be straight. I didn't notice that with this one, but it also been sitting in my basement for a while before I opened it. The brake rigging is pretty phenomenal on this model. Same with all of the BN detail. And so is the A end. The hood itself has quite a bit of detail and it's got prototype specific detail on it. Specifically the loading bale or lifting bale as it's called. If you're ever confused on what a part of one of these models is, just look at the diagram that Scale Trains is, or Scale Trains has provided. It's pretty good. They they tell you a whole heck of a lot more than they need to. The inside isn't too fantastic. Maybe if this will focus. But you're never going to see it, so it's not that big of a deal. I did notice one thing, though. These handrails are really easy to push in, so you got to be really careful. I did that when I unboxed it. Anyways, let's get to the star of the show, more or less. The coils. So, it comes with these load dividers which if it'll focus, you can see that little pin on there. It sits in these little holes here along the edge of the car. Granted, it doesn't do the greatest job of it, but if you're having issues with them moving around or getting lost, you can always glue them in place if you so choose. I, I wouldn't suggest this in a club layout. 
setting unless you are doing static loads where you glue everything into place at least for these dividers because they are very easy to lose. I can't get them to stay in place securely when I press down. They just they easily pop out of place and kind of slide around wherever the heck they want to go. I might decide if I want to do a static model or a static load with this or not. I guess in reality, these load dividers don't really need to move, but you can see how much trouble I'm having and how much they just don't engage the model. Like I'm really having to put my put some downward pressure on that to keep it in one place. However, if you want prototypical detail, not necessarily going to be easy. Before I put this last one into place, you'll notice that the load is actually the weight for the car. If you do not run the load for the car, which as you can see, kind of rolls back and forth and finds the downside. So if you don't run these with the load, it's 1.66 ounces empty. If you run them without the big load, which is in the center there right now, which I'll get to that in a moment, and my gripe with that specific load, it's 2.93 ounces. And if you run it with the full load, it's 4.23 ounces, uh, which I believe is pretty close to NMRA standards. However, without the load and without the large load, you're quite a bit under. Anyways, let me show you my gripe with the center load. And I've seen this on a couple of other review videos, but I don't think anybody's actually pointed out the issue here. So let's go ahead and load this in. And maybe it's me doing something wrong. I don't know. Anyway. There's quite a big gap right in there. Let me see if I can get a better view of that. So here's a better view of that. It's kind of exaggerated uh, on the camera because I'm... I have it punched in quite a bit. However, it's specifically that center or large load, and it does this no matter where I put it. We take this load out. We put the hood back on. It sits nice and flush. Well, mostly. Like I said, this view exaggerates quite a bit. But to my eyes, standing at layout side level, that's plenty acceptable. However, when you put the load back in, oop, one of the uh, load dividers got stuck in the hood. Anyway, it's quite significant. I can see it standing here on the side. And like I said, unfortunately, if you don't run that center load or that large load, you come in quite a bit short of the NMRA standard or recommended weights. I'm not seeing anything on the inside of the hood that could really cause this issue. There are a couple of little glue spots. And actually, maybe that mold line right there. So I just misspoke. They're not... Mold lines, they're the ejector pin, uh, holes, mounts, whatever you want to call them. Anyways, I was able to just knock those down with a bit of uh, sandpaper as well. Right in the center of the hood, there are two little spots of glue where they put on part of the uh, hood detail here for the lifting bail. That was sticking about as proud as the uh, the ejector pin spots. So I sanded those down, and now it's its flush. However, I don't think that you should have to do that for a car of this price, especially considering how fragile these these uh, grab irons are. And I really had to watch out for those because they were trying to push in quite easily. However, the issue is solved.
All right, let's show you the hood going back on. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close to where it was before. Let me show you this with the hood going down. I'm willing to live with that modification. It's really not that bad. Like I said, this zoomed in shot exaggerates it quite a bit. But I don't think you should really have to make that modification, especially for something in that second run. These are the second runs of these cars. They should have figured that out by now. All right, let's go ahead and put the stickers on the load. Go ahead and remove these real quick. All right. These are not water slide decals. They're regular stickers. So there's really not too much to be afraid of. They gave you one extra, two extra, something like that, if you mess up. So you can go ahead and line it up to this seam, which is totally not visible on the camera. There you go. And line it up to the seam. That way you don't get the sticker on in a sideways fashion so it wraps around in an uneven manner. And it will overlap itself. That's fine. I believe that's what the original or the real prototypical wrap does. Granted, you'll never notice. So since these have a little line or a little bit of wording on the bottom that says that I'm pulling a Linus and dropping everything, it says this side down. Once you put the sticker on them, you won't be able to see that. However, you just set them on something flat and let them roll and they will straighten out. There is one load that doesn't have that in it. However, that doesn't matter. And there is a little bit of a grade change there. So those stickers do impact things just a little bit with the hood height. The uh, ejector marks probably are hitting the other loads now. Also, I misspoke. You don't have extras. You have one spare for a large uh, coil that you don't get with this specific with this specific version. Uh, anyways, here it is with the stickers on the load. I'm not decided whether I'm going to glue the load dividers into place yet. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this car. It doesn't really fit my uh, layout very much. Although what I think I may do with it is this building back up here is what I'm currently calling adjacent fertilizer. The nice thing about my layout is with a building like this, I can quickly change what it's named. I could call it adjacent steel stamping or something like that. It's pretty generic. Um, the reason it's called adjacent is it's adjacent to the main line. That was the best thing I could come up with. Anyways, time for some run buys.
So this is a pretty solid car from Scale Trains. Uh, it's not without its faults, and they're not hard to overcome. You shouldn't really have to do that for a car of this price. Scale Trains is one of my favorite brands. The amount of detail on these cars and engines is insane, especially for the price. Uh, having to do all this amount of work myself would take a very long time. I know because I'm currently super detailing an SD40. Uh, that will be coming up later on the channel. Well, probably not that one. I'm going to use my first super de detailing as a kind of lessons learned and I'll record a second version. Maybe I'll do a Jeevo or something like that. Overall, I'd still say that this is a solid car. You can pick it up at scaletrains.com or your local hobby shop or any of your favorite online retailers. Uh, I think most of them should still have it. Anyways, Boulder Creek Yard out.